Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about something that is pretty common if you've had any kind of interaction on the community in the past year or so, which is image compression. So commonly when people first start out using Spark, they will put things on the face. Uh, it's a pretty common way to start. And you put images like this on the face and you end up with something that looks a little bit like this gentleman here where you have these um, images that are compressed and they don't look right and it doesn't quite look the way that it should be and someone will eventually tell you that you need to go highlight your image here and go select no compression so you can see right now on my phone here i don't have compression selected i'm going to go ahead and just say no compression do not compress this and then i'm going to push it right back to my phone and you'll see that it looks nice and clear right so that's the quickest way to solve most of those questions. Let's dive a little bit deeper into what compression is and how we can control it. The idea behind compression is that we're trying to take something that is a larger file size, like this image, and we're trying to make it smaller so that we can deliver it around the world so that people can enjoy it. The cell phone connectivity around the world is different and varies from country to country, as do bandwidth restrictions and all kinds of things. So you want to make sure that your effect is as small of a file size as possible. Now, when I go over here to my, uh, my inspector panel, uh, after I have my um, image selected and I scroll down, you are going to see the compression options here. Now, I have no compression selected. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck it, and then I'm gonna go through and look at each one of these so you can see what the compressions options in Spark are and what exactly is happening when you use them. So, first thing we're gonna do is I'm just gonna check on this box here. It's gonna jump me to the top, but I'm gonna scroll back down, check on that box. Then we use this drop down to see what are the different types of compressions that we can use for our images. Now you can see that you can control the compression formats for iOS, Android, and older Android formats individually. So let's go ahead and understand what these uh, items in this drop down mean. There's different types of compression. One of them is a PNG compression. If you've ever done any kind of optimization uh, with PNG images, you're probably familiar with a website called tinypng.com. tinypng.com is a great resource. It allows you to upload um, PNGs. It will compress them for you and remove basically most of the unneeded file size and deliver them back to you in a format that allows you to re-import them back into Spark uh, sometimes at well beyond more than half of the file size, which is a great, great, great tool. You can also uh, compress uh, JPEG images as well using tinyjpeg.com or just using tinypng.com uh, will also compress JPEG images. Automatic is going to let Spark determine what the best type of compression algorithm is. And then we have these other compression algorithms here that are 2-bit and 4-bit RGB and RGBA PVRTC compression. I'm gonna tell you what that means in a different way. So, you've gone through, you've taken all of your images, you've imported them into Spark, and you're just gonna go ahead and use Spark's built-in compression. Don't even worry about checking anything. You're dragging all your images in, and for some reason, your file size on your images makes no sense. If you have a file size like this one is 5.17 KB, sometimes when they get compressed by Spark, they will end up being much, much larger than 5.7. So why in the world, if something is being compressed, why would it end up larger than the original? The reason is because of PVRTC compression. There's two different types of weight that you need to worry about within your effect. I download uh, the filter and let's say it's six megabytes. That six megabytes is uh, one weight that you have to worry about, which is that transmission weight. The next weight is the in-memory weight, which means all of those assets need to be loaded into the scene and into the memory of the device. Those all get rendered, and when they get rendered, they take up memory. That memory is also another type of weight that you need to worry about. That is where PVRTC compression comes into play. PVRTC compression is a better compression format for memory than file size. So what that means is, if you use the automatic compression through here, sometimes you are going to end up with file sizes that are larger than what the original file size is 
but they will technically perform better on the device because of the PVRTC compression that is being used. The easiest way, the absolute easiest way and best advice I can give you is to simply compress all of your images yourself. Use tinypng.com. Once they are inside of Spark, you can then determine if you would like to turn the compression on or off for each image and how you want to control its fidelity. There's gonna be some images where you might not care if they do get compressed and you have something that might be more performant with PVRTC compression turned on. All of these tools combined should give you all that you need in order to compress all of your textures and get them down to a file size that is more manageable for your size. Thank you.